Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and today we're doing some more word problems. This time our word problems will involve addition and subtraction, so we can take a look at a couple of more problems. What we're going to do is use the same five steps that we used for solving the multiplication and division word problems. That is to identify what the question's asking, set up a strategy to help solve it, set up the math, solve the math, and then check our work using a couple different methods. So let's get right into looking at some word problems. These are application type problems because they'll happen in real life. I read a book that was so good I wanted to read it again, The Troven by Eric Buffington. So I bought another copy because that's a smart thing to do. If it costs $2.99 for the ebook and I have five had $5, how much do I have for ice cream? All right, so we're going to go through the steps. Identify first, what are we looking for? And the answer of what we're looking for is how much do I have? We don't really need to know that I'm buying it with ice cream. So let's get rid of the unimportant information. Um, that I bought a book, I thought it was good, all that silliness up top. Um, even the I bought it for ice cream could be X'd out because it's not super important. All right? So that's basically what we're looking for. How much do I have left? I started with $5, I spent $2.99, what do I have left? So I'm going to strategize now. How am I going to solve this? I'm finding what is left. So I'm finding the difference between two numbers. When I'm using difference, it is subtraction. So I'm going to use subtraction to solve this. Step three, set it up. I had $5. I took away $2.99. This is how I would set up the problem. Now I'm going to do the actual math, solve it. And I'm going to check my work. Now, there are several ways I can check my work with this question. The first way that I would do it is to use some rounding and estimating. This is $5 minus about $3. 5 minus 3 is 2. Right, so it should be the answer should be about two dollars. So I ask myself, does it make sense that it's two dollars and one cent? And yes, that's correct. It does. It's about right. If I got an answer that I had ten dollars, I'd know it was wrong because I should have less than what I started with. But if I had an answer that said I had ten cents left, I'd wonder um, if the clerk is stealing money from me. So you need to ask yourself, does the answer make sense? You can also work it backwards. Is two dollars and one cent plus two dollars and ninety nine cents is that equal to five dollars? And if that's the case, then you can also say yes, this is correct. All right. Let's move on to question number two. I have three dollars. Kaz has two dollars and twelve cents, and Maggie has four dollars and ten cents. How much do Maggie and Kaz have all together? Now this is a bit of a trick question. What am I looking for? How much money Maggie and Kaz have? I am not looking for how much money I have. So the fact that I have three dollars is an extra piece of information. It is a number, but it's not a number we're going to use. That's important. You don't always use every number. So you have to do this step first. Identify what it's looking for, then say, how am I actually going to solve that? Okay, so all together means we're adding, so I'm going to use addition to solve this question. Let's go ahead and set it up. I'm going to add Kaz's $2.12 to Maggie's $4.10, and I'm going to do the math to solve it. Check my work. So after I do the math, I'm going to double check and make sure that I've done it correct. I'm going to do some rounding or estimating. About $2 plus about $4 should give me about $6. All right, good. So the answer to me makes sense, all right, because I, I do some rounding. I do some estimating. I, it's not an outlandish number. I'm not like, hey, they have $50 together, you know. Um, so you can use a little bit of kind of rounding and estimating and reasoning to, to check on that. You can also do the math backwards. Is $6.22 minus four dollars ten cents equal to two dollars and twelve cents and that is correct so you can do the op the order of operations kind of the opposite operation so instead of adding you would do subtracting this is called using the inverse operation you can use the inverse operation to double check your work all right so where are we we're at the end 
What are the steps for solving math word problems? One, we identify what we're looking for. That's really important. In our last question, we could have accidentally added everything together and gotten it wrong. You need to know what you're looking for. Two, say, how am I going to solve it generally? Then write down the math of how you're going to solve it. Do the math and check your work. Those are the five steps for solving a word problem. I hope that lesson's been helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.